Um, Madam Roll Call. Mayor Ronnie Felder. Here. Chairperson Kashava Miller Anderson. Present. Chair Pro Tem Julia Votel. Here. Councilperson Chadrick McCoy. Here. Councilperson Shirley Lanier. Here. Councilperson Douglas Lawson. Here. City Manager Jonathan Evans. Present. Assistant City Manager Deirdre Jacobs. Here. City Attorney Don Wynn. Lina Busby here in place of Don Wynn. And Deborah Hall sitting for City Clerk Claudine Anthony. Madam Chair, you may proceed. All right, we'll have a moment of silence. Um, we did um, take notice of the officer Jackson who did pass away earlier this week. Um, so we'll have another moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Dr. Botel. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have in, any additions, deletions, or substitutions? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, if the board would indulge staff, I would like for us to add an item under presentations where the six finalists for the chief of police for the city of Riviera Beach can have an opportunity to introduce themselves to the council and to the public. And I have asked that they are granted the customary three minutes each. Well, set the timer now. <laughs> yes, we will set the timer. <laughs> All right, board okay with that? Sure. Yes. All right. Any other additions, deletions, substitutions? Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I have an addition for community benefits. Okay, what is that? Okay, so an addition for... Is it some, someone that's already been through before? No. But we, you, we, we do have the documentation and paperwork and it's consistent with the uh, adopted policies. Okay. So, yes. Okay, so what is it? You wanna know the title of okay. the organization? Yeah, what we would normally have on the um, agenda. It's called Hooping for Jesus for $250. And it's is to support community restoration projects, the basketball league and tournaments, and also providing higher education preparation with career guidance. Okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead. If we could get copies of the application, take a look at that, um, Mr. McCoy. Yes. I, I kind of expected that. Commissioner. Yes, typically we would just have copies for everyone so that we could pass them down so we can mm. see what we're voting on before we uh, vote on it, that we would appreciate that. Anyone else? Thank you so much. I trust you implicitly. I would just like to take a look yeah. at this. Thank you. And um, is there anything else? No? You're good? All right. All right, no other additions, deletions, or substitutions. All right, disclosures by council. We have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, members of the public shall be given a total of three minutes to speak on all items listed on the consent agenda. Any person who would like to speak on consent agenda items, please fill out a public comment card located on the table directly outside of the council chambers and give it to the staff prior to the adoption of the agenda. Do we have any public comment cards for consent agenda? Yes, Madam Chair, we do have one comment card for consent agenda. All right. And the name on the card is Doug Lawson. All right, Mr. Doug Lawson. You have a comment card? All right, so Miss Deborah. Okay. All right, we, somebody else is gonna have to help out here because we gotta keep the focus. All right, so apparently we have no Doug Lawson for a comment. All right, he's not here. All right. All right, so all matters listed under this item are considered to be routine and action will be taken by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council person so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. 
Um, do we have anyone that would like to pull anything from the consent agenda? All right, have a motion to accept the consent agenda? It's moved. Second, so Doug doesn't pull my item. All right, with that one being added. All right, Madam Clerk. Chairperson Miller Anderson. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. Unanimous vote. Any person who would like to speak on an agenda item, please fill out a public comment card located on the table directly outside of the council chambers and give it to the staff prior to the item being presented to city council for discussion. Um, Ms. Uh, Deborah, once the resolution is read, please announce that the acceptance of public comment cards are closed at that time. Members of the public will be given three minutes to speak on each regular agenda item in no event. Will anyone be allowed to submit a comment card and speak on an agenda item after the resolution is read or item considered? All right. Um, item number two, ordinance on first reading. I'm sorry, awards and presentations. Chief of Police, Mr. Manager. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the uh, council and members of the public, we have the distinct honor to have six of probably the most qualified and capable law enforcement professionals in the state of Florida and in the country for that matter here vying for the opportunity to be the city of Riviera Beach's top cop. And I can tell you that this process has been a very long process for this agency, but for the candidates themselves. They went through a process of submitting an application for this position. There was a total of about 58 individuals that applied for this position. I personally went through all 58 applications, looking at their credentials, looking at their expertise, looking at how they worked their way through the ranks of law enforcement. They have all attended um, advanced degrees. They all have advanced degrees. They have all attended um, senior leadership in law enforcement academies from the FBI Academy in Virginia all the way to Southern Police Institute. So they have copious amounts of law enforcement experience. They are a very talented group of individuals. So I had the task of narrowing it down to 10 individuals. Unfortunately, I could not do that because the pool of candidates was so rich. So I narrowed it down to 12, had an internal staff committee that was comprised of officers, members of executive management, to go ahead and narrow it down to four. They returned the favor back to me and narrowed it to six. And so when I looked at all the six candidates, I could not make a decision as to who are the two candidates to leave off the list. And I can tell you that when you meet these people and you have an opportunity to participate in the public reception, which is going to occur on Friday from 6.30 to 7.30 to mingle with the candidates, and then ultimately they will be sitting on this dais answering questions that will be prepared by the human resources director and staff, you will see the types of individuals that we have brought to our city. They have been interviewing as early as six o'clock in the morning and staying with us as late as 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, they've been doing this since Tuesday and their last engagement with us is um, Friday evening where we anticipate being over at about 9.30 p.m. So uh, these folks are certainly committed to this city, committed to this agency and so I'd like for them to provide a little brief intro of themselves, their experience, and, and ultimately uh, why they want to be the city of Riviera Beach's uh, top cop. And so I have their names, and in no particular order, I will call them up. And they Hold will. on one second. I'm being told that the television is not on. Can we check with them back there to make sure that it's on? <laughs> You know, Walter would do that after my speech, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're so, so well I didn't even, I didn't even exactly. rehearse that. <laughs> that was from the heart.
we're good. Feed the feed is live um, on the website or on YouTube. It may just be okay. I'm gonna check physically check. Okay, so we can keep going. It okay. will Okay. All right, we'll keep going. And so at this time, I'm going to ask for um, one of the candidates to come up, and then I will announce the, the other two to follow. If Mr. Michael Coleman, followed by Mr. William Gordon, and Mr. Nathan Osgood could address the board. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, hello, Mayor, uh, Chair, Council. Um, Hold on one second. Ms. Deborah, we can get the clock up. <laughs> yeah. I see it here, but I don't know how to. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, right. we need to make sure we get it up there so when they come in from the TV, we'll get to that. But we'll, we'll go ahead. Just keep your eye on her, her computer. <laughs> three, three minutes. Three minutes. Go uh, good evening, Mayor. Good it's, evening. Um, uh, council person on uh, City Council and City Manager, thank you for the, that lovely introduction on, on how you came to, uh, came to select all six candidates. I have been in this process for two days now, and all the candidates behind me are great men and women that you did select. So, you know, it's a, it's a fair competition and a great process, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Um, my name is Michael Coleman. I am, I was, um, I've been a law enforcement practitioner in Palm Beach County, Derry Beach, for approximately uh, 24 years, and I spent four years as a director as well, learning how to run a city from top to bottom, as well as in law enforcement. I'm seeking to be the next police chief at uh, Rivera Beach. It's a position that I've been seeking and trying to get to for the past two, three years, because I think River and Beach is one of the better cities in the county, and I want to be here to work. I see the changes you guys have made in the city, and I want to be part of those changes. My overall philosophy in uh, law enforcement, I, I, I'm a collaborative uh, partner of the community that I will be working for and working with. I love working with people itself. My, my, my overall philosophy when it comes to policing is community policing. I was, I was raised in community policing. I have implemented programs in community policing, and I want to do the same things in Rivera Beach. Uh, the program that I have created along my, uh, over my years are, um, have been benefit the youth. I'm very big on the youth, empowering youth, and I'm very big on creating communities, uh, creating wealth in the communities. Also, since in this whole process, I've had the, the extinct pleasure to meet a lot of the men who, who go out there day to day and serve the men and women in, in this lovely city. And they're very passionate, very proud to work for River and Beach. Of course, we all, they all, a lot of people have had challenges, but for, over, for the most part, they're very, very proud to work in this city, and they don't want to leave. And I would like to, I would like to have opportunity to work in this city. Um, the things that I can bring to this city is going to only enhance what the leaders have created over the past 10 to 15 years. Um, so if I am selected, I will, I will work hard. My wife will give me the blessing I, um, to work in the city. She's educated in the county. And what I do, uh, she supports me 110%. My daughter, 12-year-old daughter, gave me permission to put in for the job. She's 12 years old, and she gave me permission after two days. Um, but she's willing to move to River Air Beach and be part of this process and this journey that, uh, that, uh, that I want to undertake. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Next candidate, Mr. William Gordon. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Good evening. Uh, City Manager Evans, Ms. Jacobs. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to allow me to apply for and be considered for the Chief of Riveryard Beach. Uh, my name is William Gordon. I'm currently a major with the Water Hill Police Department in Broward County. Uh, when this position first came open, uh, I had several people reach out to me uh, to apply for it. Uh, I had to take it under a lot of consideration uh, as this is uh, a huge commitment. Uh, after much thought uh, and contemplation, I decided that this is something that I wanted to pursue. Uh, in my years in law enforcement, I started out in 1989, uh, and I've risen up the ranks. I never took a promotion uh, based solely on what I want or what I thought I would get out of it. I was taught a long time ago that if you're going to complain about something, be willing to do something about it. And so that's what I've, uh, I've done in my career, is I like to tackle uh, things head on. Uh, I like to address problems. I don't like to let them sit. Uh, I've engaged with my community in Lauderhill uh, over the last 
23 years, uh, developed programs. I am a big proponent of servant leadership. Uh, I believe that we have to empower uh, our personnel to be able to go out there and do their job, uh, give them the training, the resources, the information that they need uh, to go out there and do their job. They're the face of Riviera Beach. They're usually the first people uh, that people will contact representing the city. So I think it's very important uh, that they have that training and that information. I, I look forward to leading the members of the Riviera Beach Police Department. The experiences that I've had in Lauder Hill of starting that department and bringing them up from where uh, we were way back in the beginning when they broke away from the sheriff's office. The similar problems that are currently facing the Riviera Beach uh, Police Department, I have tackled already. And I believe my experience can help address that and help bring Riviera Beach uh, through accreditation and attaining accreditation and the professional status that this city so richly deserves. And I look forward uh, to becoming a member of the Riviera Beach family. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Mr. Nathan Osgood, and then after Mr. Osgood, if I could have uh, Spencer Rozier and then Ms. Tanya Chapman. Good evening, Madam Chair, Good Council evening. Member, Ms. Evans. Again, I'm Nathan Osgood, and I'm grateful to be one of six finalists for the police chief position for the city of Riviera Beach. That's an honor. And to be, I got a chance to meet the men and women behind me over the past, we spent a lot of time together talking. And no matter who you select, you're gonna get a great police chief here because these people are highly qualified as well. My career started with the city of Pompano Beach. I started there in 1983 as a police reserve. Then I moved over into full-time service. I worked the streets in the city of Pompano Beach. I worked hard in the streets. My job was to stamp out crime, to stomp out crime. And I spent the first few years of doing nothing but that, targeting the crime-ridden areas. And we lowered crime rate in the city of Pompano Beach, the west side. Then I moved over and started working in the city of Fort Lauderdale, undercover capacity, and the street raiders, and the city of Deerfield Beach. Then I started, I supervised those units, narcotic units, gang units, um, organized crime, money laundering. Then I went on and started getting promoted up the rank. I went on ahead and um, supervised those positions, came back and supervised areas in the responsibility. Then I moved over to stuff like community services, community policing, um, police, um, police um, information officers, public information officers, that is. Um, so as, we, as I got well-rounded, I started realizing that the heart and soul belongs to the patch. The police department, police officers, is the first line of visibility in any city. So I got on the guise about uniformity, to look neat, to present yourself well. How do you want your mother and your father to see you if you're out in the public? You treat every, every person in the community like you want to treat your family member or your family member wanted to be treated. If you see a problem in the city, address it. Meaning, if you see a pothole, call Public Works Department, just like you would do a drug dealer. If you see a drug dealer, you address that. So again, moving up the rank to the rank of major, um, in Broward Sheriff's Office, I had the opportunity to work in many, excuse me, many different areas, many different cities, and it's a, it's a, op it's a job opportunity I would never forget. I, I, this position started five years ago, the city of Riviera Beach. I wanted to come to Riviera Beach to be the police chief. It was one of two places in the, all of South Florida that I really want to be a police chief at. If I'm selected, I would make sure, one, we're accredited, two, we build morale, three, we stamp out crime. Thank you for your opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Spencer Rozier, followed by Ms. Tanya Chapman, and then Mr. Reno Wells. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Right. As you know, I'm Spencer Rose. I'm current, your current interim chief of police, but I plan on changing that to permanent. <laughs> you know, first of all, I want to compliment uh, 
uh, Mr. Evans for the thorough job he's done in providing outstanding candidates you have here. Uh, like I said, uh, they're, like he said, they're great candidates, well qualified, any one of them can do this job. So it's really up to you guys to decide the best fit for this position. And I think I am the best fit candidate for this position. And the reason I say that is because I am from this community. I grew up in this community. No slight to Mr. Reno Wills, because he's from here also, so I want to give him credit. But uh, I grew up right across these railroad tracks in Monroe Heights, you know, the same area that uh, is now known as one of our most uh, worst areas in some regards. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me say this, though. It's great people in, that, in, in those areas, not only uh, Monroe Heights, but all over this city, and they don't get enough credit uh, for what they do. You know, I think we have the opportunity right now. We talk about developing talent in-house, homegrown talent. Well, you got one here. I didn't just think about being a police officer or a police chief when this position came over. And I've been preparing myself for 30 years of law enforcement. And it started right in Monroe Heights when I started thinking about what I want to do with my life and end up going into the military and being a, a, a police officer in the Air Force and winning all kind of awards and getting high evaluations and then eventually become the first African-American male to work in the town of Palm Beach, where I spent a 20-year career there developing and, and grooming, uh, grooming and preparing for this opportunity right here today. You know, it was my, on my journey, I was able to earn two master's degrees, one in business administration, the other in uh, public administration and specialization in finance. And I went on to the SPI uh, school, one of the top schools uh, as far as advancement. I went to SMIP. I did everything I needed to do to be ready for this moment. So we can't say we don't have a qualified person in-house. I'm that person, and I look forward to being the next chief of police of Riviera Beach. Thank you. Madam Chair, yes. I want to just point out one clarification. You said it's up to us to decide. So I just want to point out that we don't decide okay. because I don't want people lobbying me because <laughs> you, won't, you won't make it anywhere <laughs> because we don't make that decision. All right, sorry about that misinformation. And, and I, I've been in that Moral Heights neighborhood. That's a great neighborhood. <laughs> it is, and, I, and I'm sorry I said, uh, I said it's considered the worst, but I know the truth, and I'm looking forward to having that whole community come out on Friday night to show you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Madam Chairperson, Council Members, City Manager Evans. Um, my name is Tanya Chapman, and it is an honor and a privilege to be here tonight as one of your finalists for the Chief of Police position. Um, I have the unique um, standout that I actually come from the state of Virginia. Um, I started my career um, almost 30 years ago in Arlington, Virginia, um, quickly rising through the ranks, um, becoming the first black female chief, I mean, captain in the history of the department within 13 years. Um, I spent the last years, the last nine years of my career with Arlington in the senior command level, and I had an opportunity um, to position myself to prepare myself for this opportunity here today. Um, after 22 years with Arlington, I left Arlington and went to the city of Richmond, Richmond, Virginia, um, which is a very a community similar to Riviera Beach. It had um, a very social economic um, background as far as the residents, um, and it's a majority minority city. Um, we had 750 officers there. I spent three years as their deputy chief of police. Um, within my last year, I was actually pulled by the mayor and the city manager to run the Department of Social, Social Services. Um, for nine months. It was supposed to be a 120-day assignment, but I served as their interim director for a period of nine months. Um, before, um, our new governor at the time was appointed, or excuse me, elected, um, and then I was appointed um, by the governor as the deputy secretary for public safety and homeland security for the state of Virginia. I had an opportunity during that time to oversee the Virginia State Police, the Department of Corrections, the parole board, as well as our Commonwealth or your state's attorney's um, council. Um, I spent two years there before being appointed as chief of police um, in the city of Portsmouth. So the last three years, I served as the city um, police chief. Um, during that time, I I had several accomplishments. Um, I was able to reduce crime in the city. I was able to diversify the city. And I started over 20 new initiatives um, that focused on accountability, transparency, 
officer safety and wellness, um, community building and community engagement um, in that public trust. Um, as far as reducing crime, we were able to reduce homicides by 52% my first year. My second year we reduced um, violent crime by 7% and overall crime was reduced by 8% last year. Um, in diversifying my police department, I was able to uh, bring up my minority and female representation from 36 to 46% within two years and minority representation um, in the department um, was raised to 31%. When I came in, my department consisted of 63% white males. Um, and then my last recruit class, we were, um, we had a, oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. Mr. Reno Wells. Uh, good evening, Mayor, good City evening. Manager, Council Chair, Council Persons. Uh, my name is Reno Wells. I have the unique distinction of retiring here at the City of River Beach. And I have to tell you this, not just because you have me on the spot, but it's no better retirement than Rivera Beach. The check is there on the first of the month. Uh, also, I, I feel good knowing the fact that I was instrumental in having that set up by being on the pension board for about 12 years. Also instrumental that all my other city employees, uh, my family for Rivera Beach, benefited by that because whatever the police department earned and got throughout the city, everyone else received. I was here since 84, saw a lot of changes, a lot of growth. Uh, this is my home, this is my passion, I can't go nowhere. I think my family was cheated, we should have made the first movie, Blue Bloods. My dad was a <laughs> cop, my ex-wife is a cop, my two brothers were police officers. Sadly, I think they deserve to be in this spot, you may know them, Jerry Wells, Anton Wells. Really a class act, and my friends ask me, well, what are you doing there? But uh, nevertheless, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm here, and I'm so honored. I never expected to be in this position. I worked hard. My friends work hard. I can't take credit for anything I've done. I was the watch commander over here, the supervisor of police as a sergeant. I started the ship crew security at the Port of Homeland Security, but I can't take credit for that. I gotta give that to my troops. You have some good troops here. The only thing we're liking now, they need to be trained up. And my goal is this, uh, community engagement program development. That's my top two goals. And with program de development is training, training, training. Community engagement, I already told them, hey, what I want to start in the city, we're going to have a job fair twice a year, not just so you can be a cop in River Beach for all professions. And next to that, we're going to go into schools. Usually, you'll see the programs, they go get the top students. I want to target the bottom third in all the classes, set up a mentoring program, and I become chief. If you see somebody knocking on your door, it's not the Jehovah Witness, it's gonna be my police officers, okay? We wanna get there and work with you and partner with you and let you know that we care. This process might take about six months. We will be in every door on every street in the city. Also in all the towers. One other thing about me, military-wise, I have about 13 years in the military. I uh, graduated high school very early. I joined the Air Force. I was in the top half, the top 1%, top secret clearance. I worked with Crypto Signal Intel, later became an officer in the U.S. Army, I was Special Ops, uh, Special Operations Forces, Civil Affairs Special Ops, excuse me, equated to the FEMA program. And basically, we deal with natural disasters in foreign countries, other countries that's besieged by uh, terrorists, whatever you want to call it. But nevertheless, I rely on that training. It did me real good, it made me prepared to come here and take charge. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much for bringing me home. Thank you so much. Mr. Evans? All right. Uh, Madam Chair, as you can see, that it's a very tough decision um, that's going to be on uh, my shoulders, and we have some phenomenal candidates, and a lot of them have also served this country in uh, the United States Armed Service, so we, we cannot thank them enough for their sacrifices. Uh, abroad as well as here as, as local law enforcement professionals. So uh, for the community, just to bring you up to speed as to where we are, they have some additional interviews uh, tomorrow with the culmination at 6.30, from 6.30 to 7.30 here at City Hall for a public reception where you will have an opportunity to mingle and, and chat with each of the candidates. And then they will sit on this very same dais here and take 
questions in a round robin format from 7.30 to about 9, 9.30, and then we'll go ahead and uh, let them go. Uh, after um, we narrow it down to probably the top two or top three, there will be an intense uh, background check and credential screening, et cetera. And then my hope is to make a decision within the first week of January. So uh, again, I wish uh, the community uh, come out and hear what the candidates have to say. It's a great group. The officers have all been involved uh, in the process. So we're, we're very fortunate to have folks that are committed to uh, this agency and serving in the capacity of the chief of police here in Riviera Beach. And Madam Chair, that concludes my comments. Right. Madam Chair. Well, yes. Mr. Evans. Yes, sir. You didn't call my name to go down and give my credentials for the police chief position. Well, you, you, you just do it all. You, you wanted the utility district director position last meeting, so now you're ready to be chief, huh? He, he did want city manager. He, he's missed his calling. Definitely want to say, um, you know, best wishes to all of you. Um, I know just going through any kind of process to get another position is, is grueling, and it seems that we have a very grueling process. So I'm sure we will get one of the best out of you some kind of way and hopefully we'll still see some of you around should any other issues uh, any other opportunities come about so <laughs> not issues <laughs> we have enough of those <laughs> <We do. Yeah. laughs> but good luck to all of you look forward to working with one of you anyone else uh, mr evans i did not envy your position not because you have selected some amazing <laughs> candidates uh, congratulations for making this far and we look forward to working with um, anyone that mr evans selects and uh, we're excited for the opportunity to have a new police chief. All right, anyone else? All right, thank you all so much. And, and Madam Chair, if I can ask for the, the candidates to be excused, they, yes, they are exhausted. <laughs> so we're going to let them go ahead and go home and get rested. Most definitely. All right, so we are at ordinance on first reading item number two. Ordinance, ordinance number 4142, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, abandoning a portion of Old East 13th Street, Flagler Avenue per plat, as shown on Riviera, according to the plat thereof, as recorded in plat book two, pages 90 and 91 of the public records of Palm Beach County, Florida, said portion lying between block two and block 14 of said plat, bounded on the east by the west right-of-way line of Avenue C and bounded on the west by the east right-of-way line of Broadway, US 1, State Road number 5, and said lands lying and being in Section 33, Township 42 South, Range 43 East, located within the city of Riviera Beach, Florida, containing 25,508 square feet, 0.5856 acre, more or less, providing conditions, providing for severability and conflicts, and providing for an effective date. So, so moved. Second. Set. All right, Mr. Manager. Madam Chair, if I can have the Interim Development Services Director, Mr. Jeff Gagden, present this item. All right, good evening. Thank you, good evening. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council staff. Uh, I'm Jeff Gagnon, Acting Director of Development Services for the City. Uh, before you have an ordinance on first reading, as read into the record, it is an abandonment of a portion of East 13th Street. Um, throughout the presentation, we've also added the label of Old East 13th Street, and I have an image and a few slides that will help um, really clarify what staff means by that. Um, so for uh, just bearings for the site, the Marina District, and I'll use the mouse here, uh, our marina district consists of, of this larger area here. Uh, you can see the marina event center just, uh, excuse me, just east of Avenue C, uh, as well as uh, the docks and wet slips that exist. The abandonment area in question is called out uh, in this red box. And as we go a little bit closer to the site, um, that old East 13th Street label was placed because uh, approximately 10 years ago, maybe a little longer, the city had reconfigured West 13th Street as a predominant gateway into our marina. 
Um, so you'll recognize that just north of the red box, you'll see the larger West 13th Street that uh, most consider to be the active West 13th Street uh, as that major gateway into the Marina Uplands. Um, and I also want to call out the fact that uh, south of the abandonment area is another roadway known as East 12th Street. So um, even if the abandonment of Old East 13th Street proceeds, uh, there'll be uh, adequate traffic circulation provided for the uplands, um, so much so that this was actually contemplated during the Marina District Uplands Master Plan and that concept plan phase, and was also incorporated into the Phase 1 Marina District Plan. Uh, so just for the record, we have our engineering drawings uh, attached uh, to the ordinance, and this is the area to be abandoned. Additionally, we have the legal description, uh, which is attached as Exhibit A and provided for the record, uh, as well as the location map, which is Exhibit B. So city staff is recommending approval of this abandonment request, uh, which was provided by the Riviera Beach CRA. Um, this is for a portion of old East 13th Street. And again, this is consistent with the city's Marina District Master Plan, uh, and we do recommend the following condition of approval. Uh, the condition is that in order to provide for continued access to maintain, repair, and replace water, sewer, and other utility infrastructure, a utility access easement shall be recorded by the applicant in the official record books of Palm Beach County within 90 days after the passage and adoption of this ordinance. Uh, and that, that easement shall be identical in dimension and area to the right-of-way abandonment area, uh, the legal description described within Section 2 of this ordinance. Um, so we've used similar language in the past for abandonment requests to just ensure that um, if there is any access that's needed, that it's maintained in perpetuity. Um, this is anticipated to lead to future development of the site um, and is also connected to um, a property swap agreement that the CRA board had approved uh, a few months back now. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, Mr. Scott Evans, the executive director of the CRA, is present as well. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have public comment cards on this item? Madam Chair, we do have public comment cards. Okay. The acceptance of public comment cards is now closed. First would be Lloyd Brown, followed by Bonnie Larson. So we'll just make that announcement that it's closed after the resolution is read. Uh, give it away. Good evening. Just, good evening. My name is Lloyd. Have the timer up, please. Lloyd Brown, hey, give it away. Just keep giving it away with these people, you know, like they're not even, I mean, permanent in these positions. I don't think you should do that. I mean, until we get somebody, just like you're going to get a new head chief of police, let's get somebody in these positions before you start giving away these properties or letting this man tell you what to do. Because for one thing, the only thing I ever see, you say stay on the subject. <laughs> Is anytime there's something to do with the black side of Riviera Beach, it's everybody over there. If we don't want it, it doesn't make a difference because uh, you will just vote whichever way you know it's certain people in your, on your, well, your peers vote. And it's like the people are tired. You know, we're getting really tired of this guy coming in our neighborhood. I'm talking about him. I mean, we don't need him in our neighborhood trying to tell us what kind of economy, what kind of roads we need. We don't need them at all. I mean, that's wrong. And I mean, it's like every time you look around, you just taking a part of Riviera Beach and you tearing it out. Over there where you got those boats and all that, I used to go over there when I was a young boy. You could walk right down those streets. You can go all the way down to the intercoastal. You can't even go over there. I mean, you want to block it off. I mean, you trying to build. Okay, look at City Place. Look at all these places. Them brothers still killing each other downtown. We need to work with the problems that local. Forget this about buying out and selling out and giving away. Let's try to deal with these criminal problems we got around here. Let's bring some jobs, you know. Every time you give away a place like that and somebody builds something in it or somebody do something in it, you never have anybody I know working there. And, I mean, I keep telling y'all, y'all be saying I got to stay on the subject. But, I mean, how could you stay on the subject when all the time you steady agreeing on things that are making it worse on our side of the town. And like I know when I kept telling y'all about, oh, these people that you want to build all these places, okay, it's okay to build them, 
but building with some people out of the community. Because I know one thing at J Ministry, we got a lot of guys over there who skill, who can do work. I don't care what you put in these places, but what I'm trying to say, have the people that at least live in Rivera Beach working in these places. Don't have nobody come in here, next thing you know, it'll be Guatemalans doing the grass, it'll be Haitians doing the security, and it won't be no black Americans that I know who forefathers were hung back in the days before we even had these people coming to America. They know what it is to be in this situation. They don't know nothing about it. They think America was like this all the while. That's BS. It's a lot of people I know died. I had an uncle who, got, who was hung because things that are in America now. And I think these black people need to have more benefits than just putting things in their neighborhood and not giving them jobs. And you wonder why all these other people are getting robbed? Because they got the jobs. You wonder why these young kids are selling drugs? Because they're felons. You got to work with them. Thank you. All right. How many? Just those two? OK. The only ones who showed up tonight, Bonnie Larson. Good evening. Good evening. This is an abandonment of 13th Street, old 13th Street. And I need to tell you about something. This went through the PMZ, and you were probably told that they approved this. It was approved four to three. That's very close. If you, I hope that you listened to this on uh, the television, the PNZ meeting. It was very interesting, very interesting. And you have the minutes in your backup tonight because Ms. Burgess, the um, chairperson, and Ms. Clark, they asked some very precise questions. They were not getting precise answers. This didn't come up about the land swap until further on in the discussion, and it kind of had to be pulled out of them. I don't know what the obsession is with Viking. I really don't understand. Let's remember, they're the ones who wanted to take all of us on the east side by eminent domain. Let's remember that. They're the ones who shut down the Maritime Academy. Terrence Davis, I believe, was the one who suggested put it on your own property. You know what Vikings said? Our property is too expensive. They don't want to have underground utilities on their property. They're the first ones to say no. Some of the things during the um, PNZ meeting, which you can read right in your minutes, one of the ladies said it would have been nice to have had the swap information. The response was, that's already been approved. So in other words, it's not important. Oh, it's very important. Very important. We have not seen that swap. We don't know who negotiated. Only the CRA um, negotiated that. They asked the question, is Viking here tonight at the PNZ meeting? Someone said a, a rep from Viking is here. Ms. Burgess, I believe it was, said, could he come to the microphone? We have some questions we'd like to ask him. Community Development said, no, 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 this has nothing to do with Viking. Nothing to do with Viking. It has everything to do with Viking. So they weren't allowed to um, have a conversation with the Viking rep. What are Vikings' plans? That was asked. We haven't asked them. Future development. Viking came in here and said, we're going to improve Riviera Beach. We're going to build condos. We're going to do this. We're going to be do that. They've done nothing for us, absolutely nothing. They charge us 11000 a month for parking. You give away, this say, an abandonment because it's not used. We use that for parking. You give that away. There goes even more of our parking. Is that what you want to do? I don't think so. Um, running out of time here. Uh, it's like seven days before Christmas, and we come up with a big deal like this. Big deal like this. No. No, pushing it. CRA is pushing this. Why are they pushing it for Viking? They said, oh, Viking has nothing to do with this. Yes, they do. I went over, and I've asked several times now from the CRA, I want a plat. I want a diagram of the marina property, and I want to see all the, all the little lots that have been laid out. They're all different shapes, and I want to know who wants everything. I have not gotten it as of today. Now, you should have it. I asked a council person last week, do you have that? No, you should have gotten that on day one when you came on board. You should have had a plat so you can see what you're agreeing to and what you're not agreeing to. Thank you, you need to see that and have it. Thank you. All right, questions, comments from the board? Madam Chair. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Gagnon, please. Yes, sir. In your presentation, did I hear you say that the property swap occurred a few months ago? The CRA property swap occurred a few months ago? I, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact date. Uh, Mr. Evans could probably provide a better timeline. So I guess in theory, the agreement was reached, but isn't it contingent upon this abandonment? 
again, yeah. Scott Evans, the executive director, would probably be the better uh, respondee to that question. Okay, I'll yield back um, later, and then I'll come back and try to get Mr. Evans, Scott Evans, to ask, answer that Do you question. want to just come now? Um, actually, no, ma'am. Can okay. I yield back? Okay. Anyone else have questions, comments? Madam Chair. Go ahead. What is the status of the land swap? Well, I guess he needs to come down there. <laughs> yeah. Hi, good evening. Good evening. I'm Scott Evans, uh, CRA Interim Executive Director. Um, the CRA Board in 2017 approved a land swap um, that created the larger type of parcels that were envisioned in the Marina Master Plan. In order to redevelop our marina village, uh, we need to create larger blocks that are capable of sustaining the, the kind of development that's envisioned in the master plan that was approved in the phase one site plan. Currently, the property ownership is, is a very small parcels that are mixed throughout um, the marina village. So there's no one large area in between Avenue C and Broadway that is, is ripe for development. Um, at least not that it's controlled by the city and the CRA. So the property swaps attempted to create um, the larger development parcels that were envisioned um, in, in order to achieve the development of the Marina Master Plan. And as a, as a requirement of that property swap, um, it was a uh, requirement was that eventually that old 13th Street would be abandoned. And this abandonment, um, this street is no longer used. It's, it's not envisioned in the phase one site plan that city council approved, nor the Marina uh, District Master Plan that was approved. So by eliminating this, we're starting to create the large development blocks that will help the city achieve the redevelopment uh, that we desire for the whole Marina Village. Um, are all the parties ready for the swap? Uh, yes, the, the swap uh, is, is set to go th through. Additionally, it also, um, a part of that agreement will allow Viking to provide us with some utility easements, uh, which is the last remaining item in the critical burial of the overhead utilities. So along the Broadway corridor, we have about three key utilities are on Broadway properties. And as a part of that, uh, that action, we'll be able to uh, restart that utility burial project also. Um, and another, the final piece of that swap is a piece of property over on 11th Street, um, in between Wright Street and Avenue E, uh, which we presented to the CRA board uh, at our last meeting. And that, that piece um, allows us to move forward um, with um, a townhome project that we'd like to do. So there's, there's a number of, of transactions linked to this abandonment, uh, which allows that property swap to go forward. So what's the timetable on that? Uh, that would proceed immediately uh, following this abandonment. So if there is no swap, what happens to the proposed plans for phase two? So if there's no swap, then we no longer have the large development sites to attract the kind of development that we're looking for. Uh, Viking uh, continues to own uh, the larger piece, so their piece is developable. Uh, but without the property swap, the, the property that's controlled by the CRA and, and ultimately City Council um, is not developable. It's very narrow. So the property swap positions uh, the CRA to be able to have a large piece of property that's developable directly adjacent to the marina. So that would, it would, it, it, it's very advantageous to the, to the city overall and to the CRA and to our future development to be able to put together the kind of development parcels that will sustain the kind of um, jobs, uh, tax revenue uh, in, in the form of new development that we desire. I'm asking these questions because it seems that we should have had the land assembled before we entered into an RFP or now negotiations. Uh, the land assembly is, was under uh, attempted for the last 10 years, actually. Uh, so I was, it was very exciting when it was finally passed in 2017 to try to put together the pieces of property that will allow the Marina Village to be redeveloped. And it's, so that approval um, allowed us to put the swap together. But it was contingent upon uh, the street abandonment. I just don't think we should be doing any abandonment until we know that the parties are, you know, are ready for the land swap. Madam Chair, if I may. Um, Mr. Evans, isn't it true that there is, <clears throat> with the vacation of that particular roadway, that it is contemplated that, and the agreement's been executed, if that goes forward, then the land swap moves forward yes. for the purposes of this particular transaction. So there's already 
an agreement in place. And this last element is the mechanism that effectuates the land swap. The other concern that we have with respect to the properties that are under the control of the city is that in the event that that roadway is not vacated, our properties are undevelopable. So all you can conceivably do there is a linear park and you could not see the economic development um, that we are hoping to see occur as it relates to the site. In addition to the land swap would also give us property that is contiguous to our property and allows for us to be able to uh, move forward with some of the development that we're looking to uh, happen on that site. And Mr. Evans, correct me if I'm wrong, also as part of the RFP document <coughs> that was provided to the entities that would like to bring phase two alive, it was contemplated in part of the publication that the city would effectuate, uh, will vacate that roadway to create those large blocks of land for the purposes of the mixed use development that's looking to occur, to occur. Yes, that's correct. Have, have you seen that agreement? The agreement for the, the property swap? No, I have not seen the agreement for the property swap. Okay, it seems like we're offering up land and we have no site, no site control over this piece of land that we're offering up. And, you know, as I said before, we're moving forward with negotiations. We're moving forward, and we haven't even got the, the, the land assembled yet. It's like I said before, it's like we're putting the cart before the horse here. Uh, what was the reason? Who do I ask? What was the reason for the three no votes for this swap? So there was, there was a lot of discussion and debate at the Planning and Zoning Board meeting. Uh, the meeting minutes are provided in the backup as well for reference. Um, the conversation really was associated with timing as far as if now is the right time or if it should wait to a, a future time. Um, so that was really uh, my recollection of what that conversation uh, <coughs> was comprised of and was an influencing factor on those votes. And Madam Chair, Mm -hmm. If I may, and Mr. Evans, this question is probably more suitable for you. If the board votes tonight to vacate East 13th Street, and for some reason the folks at Viking are not willing to effectively move forward with the property swap, then there's no harm that is effectively done to the city as it relates to the vacation of a roadway because we would have to, it would have to be a, an arrangement that concurrently both entities would have to agree to transfer the ownership of the properties they own and then we would transfer the ownership of the property that, um, that if the properties we own and the properties they own would be memorialized in a legal agreement but in the event that they say, no Scott, we're, we're not interested anymore and we've already vacated the roadway, there's no harm that's effectively done to the city by us moving forward with vacating the roadway as it stands right now because there's still an agreement that would have to come back before this board for execution? Uh, well, the, the property swap, right? If, if for some reason it didn't go through, there was, there's no harm that would be done. We're, it's still, in accordance with the master plan with what we're trying to do to move uh, the larger development parcels forward. And we own all of the property along the north side of the abandonment. So if that did move forward, I mean, it's still to the benefit of us to for that to happen. So have all the parties affirmed that they're going to do the swap, um, specifically Viking? Yes. Have they confirmed that they will do the swap? Absolutely. We, we have had, Mr. Evans and I have had conversations with representatives from Viking as early as uh, two weeks ago, and that was uh, explicitly clear that the vacation of East 13th Street would be the mechanism that would effectuate the swap, and that is the, the last element of that particular deal um, to be able to square off the parcels. Um, and so I think even if the council is to vacate that roadway and then that there is some uh, material issue that comes up as it relates to the contract, it still shows that we have 
in fact vacated that roadway, but it doesn't do any harm to us um, as it relates to the the roadway pro or the the project in its entirety. It actually improves our position. So you know that the 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 readiness of biking is key to this. Absolutely. And you have their affirmation that they are going to move forward. Absolutely. Okay. Madam Chair, follow up on on the line of questioning from board uh, councilperson Lanier. Mr. Evans, it was my understanding that the agreement has already been consummated and executed and the documents are being held in escrow and the very last thing that has to happen is the abandonment. Is that not the understanding? Yes, that's correct. So to your point, Mr. Jonathan Evans, I don't think there's an opportunity for Viking to back out because the agreement has already been executed for the land swap. If for some reason they don't go forward with conveying the land as the agreement is provided for, then, I mean, there's options in circuit court for enforcement, but this is the only mechanism to assemble anything to get development along that corridor. But if I could just take a moment to reflect back to the minutes of the P and Z board, you know, I, I, I looked at those no votes and the comments that was made by those members, and it seemed that all of them surrounded and were around questions of not having enough information about what the CRA's intention is. And I certainly respect them because I got my, my, my start on the planning and zoning board. But one thing I did learn over time, when you deal with an abandonment, you have a very clear uh, and very, very narrow scope as to what you're examining. And the, typically the intentions of the property after they're abandoning is outside your scope. Right. And a lot of those questions that they were asking was not relevant to the actual item that was before them. And because they didn't have the information, they had some level of uncomfortability. And that, in my opinion, is what prompted the no vote. And which brings me back to the point to remind you that I think it's imperative that we get them some training because, you know, you can't arbitrarily vote against something for reasons that's not within the scope of the abandonment that's before you. And, and Councilman McCoy, to your point, I was just saying that in the event for whatever reason that there is uh, a thought that Viking can attempt to wiggle out of the arrangement that it, by us vacating that roadway, it doesn't weaken our, our position. Um, to, but to your point, you're ex exactly right, is that everything has been um, consummated as it relates to the relationship and how the process is going to move forward. And obviously we have a vested interest as it relates to even the phase two project to assemble as much property adjacent to ours to help effectuate the redevelopment of our marina. So has that, so has Hold that. On one minute, you're finished, Mr. McClough? Are you back? Okay, go ahead. So has, have those documents been reviewed by our legal department? Uh, those those documents are, are the agreement is between the CRA um, and Viking. So that's that was a re reviewed by the CRA's uh, legal attorney Michael Haygood. So the city has not reviewed them, legal. No, because that agreement's between the CRA and and Viking. Um, and tonight's abandonment, of course, I assume that city legal has right. reviewed that. Yeah. Well, I'm, my my um, concern is that there could be some. You know, there could be some exit clauses, and we haven't even seen the agreement. M Mr. Evans. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Well, uh, one, one of the things, obviously, this is first reading, um, and we can certainly uh, provide additional information before your second and final reading to provide any additional clarity from city uh, legal concerning this, but to Mr. Evans's point that this is a relationship that is between the, the CRA and Viking. However, in the spirit of cooperation and working together and that strip of, uh, of infrastructure, uh, it requires the legislative action by this board to, to vacate um, that, that stretch of roadway that is not being utilized and not being maintained up to city standard and in the event that we don't do anything eventually we're going to have to look to reconstruct that roadway at a 
pretty sizable cost. And our job, what we want to do is assemble these large tracts of land for the purposes of redevelopment. And and I understand it, and I'm you know have no problem with that. I just want, but my my concern is that it is related. You know that we can have the city to regroup to review these documents because it is related. All right. So so I would like to have that done before this vote tonight if that is the case then someone need to make yeah, a motion because to otherwise take there's it, no urgency. or um we can um vote on it tonight and then get that information for the second vote as they explained before so if you someone like to make a motion if you are not interested in voting tonight then you all can do that i just think we should be able to see the documents that we're actually having conversation about so, okay, well, Mr. Evans, Scott Evans, is there a reason why we weren't able to see that before tonight? Uh, no, we have those documents. We can, if the board would like, we could circulate them. Um, uh, my request would be that we pass this on first reading or at least, and at least try and move it forward and we will provide all the documents, both to city legal and to the board. They're, of course, approved in 2017 along with you know a, a lot of other legal documents, but we can make these ones available. Madam, Madam Chair, to, yes. to Mr. Evans's point, I, I would also echo that the board approved the item on first reading with the caveat that it is to be reviewed by city legal and provided as part of the presentation for second and final reading. All right, what, any comments from the board? So that would be a condition. That is correct. Okay. If, if if a member offers it up as a amended motion, that is correct. So, if that's what um, you yes, I'm offering that up as an amended amendment to that motion. That it is a condition that the city reviews those legal documents and we have a look at them as well. All right. That second still stands. Whoever. No, I, did I make the motion? Then? Whoever motioned it and seconded it. Can you remind us who made the first most motion so we can agree to the amendment? It's usually Botel and I know, um, I know. Lost then I, and then I, then I, I mean, I, I those agree two to the never make any. And on the amendment, you offer up a new second. That's all that it is. Who was it? Anybody? Is it you? I don't call, but I, I don't. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. I don't support the second. That's why I was. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Madam Clerk. So debate debate on, on this yes. amendment. Go ahead. So here's my question um, to a commissioner, council person, board member, mm -hmm. the nearest point. You know, we got so many hats. I try to fit the right one at the appropriate time. Um, in fact, this was reviewed by city attorneys because I can remember when this item came up before and there's been several discussions about it. But let's be clear about what we're talking about. And I want to see if there's an opportunity that perhaps even Mr. Gentile may be able to um, um, kind of further clarify. But what, we're, what we have before as members is there is an agreement that's been already executed between the CRA and Viking to exchange property so that they have a contiguous piece of a property. The city of Riviera Beach is not a party to that. So us reviewing the documents provides nothing for the city. It's solely, basically, it's a private transaction. And, you know, I take this back to what I've seen on other meetings. We take things sometimes, I think, in an effort of due diligence, sometimes to a point where it becomes almost moot and unnecessary. Now, I certainly respect if a member has concerns about us abandoning a property, but the agreements between two private parties is no business of the city. If we're going to abandon the property for uh, a public purpose to assemble development, then that has no bearing on whether or not the city uses it because there is provisions in the current um, there is provisions in the current resolution that ultimately it stays with Viking and if it, the property stays with Viking if we doesn't if we don't do that now the problem with that is you won't have any development what I don't want to do is hastily slow down additional process and staff time of reviewing something that has absolutely nothing to do 
with the city. So those are my um, concerns regarding the amended motion. I just don't think it's necessary and it would cause hastily delays. I yield back. Madam Chair, Ma the, the city's interest in that is the street. Only the city can effectively vacate the street. Right. And so that's, that's where our involvement begins and ends. And not with the agreement. Right. That's correct. So there would be there would be no urgency. I mean, the city never received a review or reviewed um, the documents. So the thing about it is that where we are now, we have not seen it. And you have to remember, we do sit as a CRA board as well. So we have a vested interest on both ends of this. Okay. May I? Yes. Go ahead, Chair. Mm -hmm. Now. To the councilman to my right, if I, I have the floor, which means I can ask to call the question, which means that I need to have a second in that request, and then we can vote as a body on calling the question. So I ask to call the question. Do I have a second? Second. Do we need to vote on calling the question? Yes. All in favor of calling the question? I <laughs> to shoot a chair and the. <laughs> I just want to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take our vote. All right, Madam Clerk. Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Chair Paul Timbletel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Unanimous vote. All right. So Madam Chair? We're on the amended motion. <laughs> we're on the amended motion. Okay, amended motion. Madam Clerk? Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Chair Pro Timbletel? Now, let me be clear. This is on the amended motion that requires that the. I thought that's what we just voted on. Yeah, I think no, we, we just, voted on. No, we voted to call, call the question. question. Mm -hmm. So okay, we didn't have a second. Um, oh, well, you you said we didn't need a second. We had one. Lawson second. Mr. Lawson gave the second. So we're voting so on the amended. The this motion is on that the you made. The amended motion. You made. motion. Yes. Okay. All right. So can Madam you start roll call over, please? Okay, go ahead. Chair Mueller Anderson? Yes. Pro Chair Tim Botel? No. Councilperson McCoy? No. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson Lawson? No. That item fails. All right. So we're back to the original motion. Madam Clerk? So are we done with debate? No, I think yes. we are. Okay. Thank you. you I, I can't say Madam that. Clerk. We're back to the original motion. Yes. <laughs> Chairperson Miller Anderson. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson Lanier. No. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. The item passes with Councilperson Lanier dissenting. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm almost afraid to. Item number three, regular item. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, authorizing the contribution of District 1 neighborhood sector funds in the amount not to exceed $35,000 for the purchase of portable perimeter fencing and providing an effective date. Madam Chair, we do have comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards on this item is now closed. All right. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Mr. Manager. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can have uh, Parks and Recreation Director Mr. Richard Blankenship present this item. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager Richard Blankenship, Parks and Recreation Director. Good evening. This item is uh, seeking authorization to purchase portable fencing um, using District 1 sector funds that are used several times a year during uh, special events and, and uh, uh, activities that we have going on in the city. Presently, we have to rent that. Um, by purchasing the fencing, we will, uh, it will pay for itself in approximately two and a half years. And it also provides opportunity for the CRA to use it for their events and, and uh, other events that we have in the city. Um, I, they were, I placed two examples in, in the uh, packet. Uh, one of them is a barricade type fencing that you would recognize when we do uh, July 4th event or MLK, and the other is a six by 10 uh, web panel fencing. Uh, for similar activities. Um, I'll be able to answer any questions you may have regarding the issue. All right, public comment cards. Lloyd Brown, followed by Bonnie Larson. Yes. 
Mr. Brown here? Lloyd Brown? Okay, Ms. Larson? All right. Okay. Um, comments, questions from the board? Madam Chair? Yes. Um, permission to kind of, um, kind of go into explaining this. I had the opportunity to sit in on uh, MLK coordinating, uh, I'm sorry, the planning coordinating committee of our staff that is coordinating the events. And I've seen the budget and I thought it was uh, something that we could improve on. And I kind of polled and asked um, Mr. Blankenship and the members of that committee what were some of those expenses, you know, and we have did take some efforts in curtailing some of our expenses, like there's not going to be a gala with the keynote speaker. And, you know, it was mentioned that we spend, you know, quite a bit of money in renting. And I said, well, it, it provided that it clears finance, I don't mind supporting it from my sector dollars. And Mr. Blankenship brought back this item. And I think it's a, a, a great item because it is going towards a capital project that we can use further. And I would certainly ask my members to support it. However, I'm going to offer an amendment since this item is primarily, or at least suggested, for the MLK parade, which goes down West Blue Heron, and that's shared between myself and Councilperson Lanier. So I want to offer an amendment to see if she'd be willing to split the cost out of her sector funds um, when that time comes up later after other board member comments. <clears throat> um, Matt, uh, <laughs> Councilperson McCoy, uh, you should ask the CRA to split it. They have events from time to time, so if anyone is going to split the cost, it should be through the CRA. But I, if, if I can respond. Yes, sir. Commissioner, I think we get a sizable amount of money from the CRA to supplement the MLK parade. In fact, they are one of the largest sponsors of the MLK parade. But, you know, I so whether you support it or not, I guess my idea was, it's a lot easier for us to spend 38000 which will cover the cost of us doing fencing for two years. I just was asking if any one of my colleagues here, and I know I can't ask the gentleman from the 5th District about his sector dollars because no, like, give me none. <laughs> he wasn't, he wasn't uh, allocated any. But I was just asking if anyone wanted to share the cost. If not, you know what, and, I, and I, let me make sure I always preference this. This is not Trodrick McCoy's money. You know, this money belongs to Sector 1, and you know anybody that has a proposal or idea that better sector one or the community at large i don't mind putting it forth and that's what it's here for to be stewards of taxpayer dollars and this in itself pays for it so um that's why i wanted to extend the offer since you share um the other half of mlk boulevard where the parade is to sharing the cost madam chair yes mr lawson i think this is a, a great use of sector funds uh, councilman mccoy um because in addition to the cost of that two and a half year period, Mr. Blankenship, I also believe the rental from the CRA and the usage for the different events that are actually rented out to the marina and to the um, <clears throat> to the marina pavilion, that this could be covered in a lot shorter period of time. Um, so that cost will be recouped uh, quickly. This is an initiative that I wanted us to do a, a while ago. So thank you, Councilman McCoy, for bringing it to the table. Thank you, Mr. McCoy, for doing this. Um, you know, I know we've joked a lot about the sector of monies up here, but I think this item here is a great investment from from your district, and um, I fully support it. I do too. Madam Chair? Yes. Mr. Blankenship, if you'd be able to just put together a cost analysis of what you'd be renting this these supplies out to the CRA and what's, what they're going to be using to rent it out to the local businesses that maybe want to utilize the park and um, what we'd be able to receive in return, because from my understanding, we lease out that pavilion, we, our Bicentennial Park, at least 10 to 15 times a year uh, where they utilize these type of fencing. And they're going to local vendors. So if this can be incorporated into the cost of rental space, then that can actually be offset the cost of these sector funds and bring down that, that overhead a little quicker. So, And to answer your question, it'd be about $4,000 per Event. event and we know that because wow. that's what we spend when we do um, perfect July 4th and that's what we'd be renting into the local businesses as well in that general area perfect that, that's definitely gonna be beneficial so that cost is gonna offset quickly at 35,000 so it'd be Follow it's up. a great benefit to the city thank you again <laughs> no, he, can, he cannot have it back <laughs> follow-up madam chair go ahead thank you councilperson Lawson what a great idea 
Mr. Sherman. <laughs> Put you know his hand on his head. Ask, right? <laughs> <laughs> so any money that we generate from this investment, would that be able to go back into the coffers of the sector dollars? Or probably not. It has to be reallocated by budget. But you know, hey, I had to try, right? At least give some nice try. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so um, we won't charge um, the district if the district utilizes it for events within the district. <laughs> <laughs> um, one question of Commissioner Lanier. Commissioner Lanier, would you be amenable to a friendly amendment to share in the cost? If not, I won't put the motion on the floor. No, sir. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Blankenship. Madam Clerk? Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Botel? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson Lawson? Yes. Unanimous vote. Discussion and deliberation, item number four. Madam Chair, this item before you is to uh, request that we uh, offer to the city employees uh, Christmas Eve or December 24th off. Uh, when I did look at other municipalities throughout Palm Beach County, um, multiple jurisdictions such as the town of Jupiter is closed December 24th and 25th. West Palm Beach is December 25th and 26th. The town of Palm Beach is closed December 24th and 25th. And Palm Beach County is closed December 24th and 25th. In light of the citywide organizational goals and us looking to obtain operational excellence, I think it would be a extreme uh, nice, extremely nice gesture to the employees if the council will authorize me to close non-essential city operations for Tuesday, December 24th, and then compensate all other employees consistent with their collective bargaining agreements, as well as the city's overtime and holiday pay policy. The fiscal impact associated with this is approximately $100,000. The monies are already budgeted and accounted for, so it's not going to overexpend or overexhaust any fiscal resources within the agency. So, uh, staff is recommending approval and authorization to close non essential city operations on uh, December 24th, which is Tuesday, Christmas Eve. And staff is prepared to answer any questions the board may have. Right. Do so we have any public comment cards on this item? There are no public comment cards on this item. All right, Mr. McCoy. I wanted to make a motion to support that item with the understanding that there is no, uh, I guess this one additional day that's closed doesn't affect any penalties or any kind of, I guess what would regularly be due on that day, um, like such as water bills or whatever, what library fines or whatever. Yeah. Usually during this time, um, we we don't you know cut folks off or, or levy fees or we're we're very conscientious. Uh, we we do this during the holiday season so um, we don't have a situation where we cut people off on Monday and then we're closed Tuesday and Wednesday etc so we're, we're very conscientious of that all right any other questions you make the motion I'm sorry uh, second so moved yes second all so right. this is already I'm sorry madam chair go ahead so this is already budgeted so we're not we're not okay yeah. All right, Madam Clerk. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right. Um, we'll go into public comments. Public comments should be, I'm sorry, public comments should re be restricted to issues, matters, or topics pertinent to the city of Riviera Beach. Please be reminded that the city council has adopted rules of decorum governing public conduct during official meetings which has been posted at the entrance of the council chambers in an effort to preserve order. If any of the rules are not adhered to, the council chair may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium from the meeting and or the building if necessary. Please govern yourselves accordingly. And I wanna remind everyone to please um, pay attention to the clock, you, have, you will have three minutes. The acceptance of public comment cards is now closed at this time. We will begin with Bonnie Larson, followed by Jill Marie, Wardo Kogan, and lastly will be J.B. Dixon. Bonnie Larson, first of all, thank you for getting rid of that green dot. It's the most ridiculous 
ridiculous time I've ever seen in my life. I brought my kitchen timer with me. You couldn't tell that silly green, who thought that up? I don't know. <laughs> Couple of questions. Um, I wondered this for a while. When we have items to be brought before the council and it's approved by all the different departments, why is it that the department heads who make the big bucks, why is it that they don't sign off on each one of them? It's usually a staff member. I wondered about that for a long time. And like today there was one item and it was signed off by one person for the, um, for the attorney, for the city clerk, and for Mr. Evans. So why do staff people sign off? It should be people who make the big bucks, the department heads, because that's where the buck stops. We talked about potholes tonight in the utility um, meeting, and there's been a pothole on the CRA property by the Dairy Belt for years. I have reported it for years. The pavement is about this much below the manhole cover. I was told by our previous utility person, you go to the city, and standing there, right there with his tablet, and he said, you go to the city and you write it up as a report. No, not my job. I don't know if that's hurting the water, but I'm just tired of reporting it, so I'm not doing it anymore. I know the CRA is going to say we're going to redo the, the pavement, but it's been there for a couple of years. Um, waste management pickup dates, have they changed? I think I saw something on the board here when I was paying my water bill, because the vegetation guy, sometimes he comes on Tuesday, sometimes he comes on Wednesday, and since I did see something on the board, I don't have Channel 18, we need to know if they've changed their pickup dates. Um, the other thing was, oh, we, we talked about at the workshop, that was a good workshop, by the way, we talked about um, doing a survey, it's going to come up later, and Ms. Lanier, you mentioned maybe there'd be an incentive for people to fill out the survey. And I know the business that you're in is health-related, and people usually are reluctant to give their health information, but if this is a survey for what they want to happen in the city and they don't ever come to the meetings or something, they should be happy to fill that out and have a voice without actually having to come here and stand at the podium. There's nothing scary about standing here, but some people feel it is. So I don't think an incentive is really necessary. They should want to do it because it'll give them a voice without having to stand here. The last thing I want to talk about is the, our water bills. Everybody that I've talked to, our water bills have gone up. And I know when our previous water guy was here, he said he'd done a study. So my question is, are they going to go up again from his study? Is that what we have to look forward to? And also the other thing was he promised us that we could look up online what our water bill was each day. Because I said to him, you know, I got to put it into a level two. What happened here? Don't use any more water than I did before. And they said, you'll be able to call this number, a number, and then every day you can see how much water you used. Now, they said it would be ready by September, and but I haven't seen it yet. I called Ferguson, and they said, well, that's up to the city when it starts. But I'd like to know when we could be able to do that to find out how much to anticipate we're spending. Thank you. What's next? Jill Marie Wardell Colgan. Is that the last one? The last person would be J.B. Dixon. Okay. Thanks, Deborah. I'm Jill Marie Wardell Colgan. Good evening. I founded Singer Island Paws and Paddocks Rescue. <coughs> I also founded and created and owned Singer Island Beach Polo. I'm very limited in what I can discuss here tonight due to the ongoing investigation, as you very well know. Um, I spent a lot of money on that charity, the Inner City Youth Riding Program, the Animal Rescue. I happen to have been the uh, biggest charitable donor in the area at $500,000 in five years' time. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I want you to know the only people on the paperwork for the beach polo has ever been in the eight years since I founded it is my sons, Jordan and Shane. The only thing Julia Botel is on is on police body cam video stealing the admissions money box at beach polo from my son, my autistic son, who volunteered every weekend to teach the children of this city to ride horses out of the goodness of his heart. That's about all I can say due to the ongoing investigation and the, the attorneys and uh, how very unfortunate. But I gotta tell you something. I have told everybody I would not donate to a charity in Riviera Beach under present administration or open a business here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Dixon? I 
I'm J.B. Dixon. I live at 3000 North Ocean Drive on Singer Island in Riviera Beach. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm the Snopes of the City Council, <laughs> and that's why I usually try to put in a comment card, um, because I like to take umbrance at some things that are not true, one of which is the theft of a cash box. I would like to be able to explain that. And actually, there is um, there was an investigation requested uh, by the previous speaker, and that came back exonerating uh, Councilwoman Botel of all of the accusations. Um, what happened was that vendors were not being paid with the sponsorship money, and we had certain bills that had to be paid. The money, cash, was in a lockbox. The lockbox was taken. We did not have the key. Um, the police took custody of it. And a, a meeting here in this very building with the previous speaker and her attorneys was that whatever was in the cash box would be hers, um, except for those things owed to vendors, vendors who had done things uh, for the polo event. Those vendors were paid, so the city did not look terrible. And the money was counted by her son, and she signed, in the presence of her attorney, a waiver saying that that was all she was owed. That and the money she had taken um, and spent personally of the sponsorship money. That was also, it came to $22,000 that was given to her. Um, why this thing of stealing this box uh, has come about, I, I don't know. But there was no theft. And your own police department can uh, tell you that, as well as uh, the state attorney's office. Thank you. Thank you. Is that in the public comment? That concludes public comment. All right, Ms. Evans, did you have any answers to any other questions during public comment? Um, I do, Madam Chair. All right. Uh, the sign-off on the agenda items, in some cases, the department directors are the individuals that draft the agenda items, and then it's input in the system that we have to go through the um, process. And so every department director has some involvement in it, but is a way how maybe they utilize some clerical assistance to enter it into the system. However, we are looking at a new agenda management system and all that will be, um, they will enter it into the specific system. It will always, it will have the um, categories for the background, budgetary impact, operational um, consistency with goals and objectives. So it will be a lot cleaner process and move away from kind of the archaic process that we do have in place. Uh, with respect to the pothole, I can take a look at that and have crews go and assess that situation. Um, waste management and the pick updates, we will put a crawl on uh, channel 18 and push information out on our website and make sure that folks know that as a result of the holidays what the modified uh, schedule will be. Um, the water bills, I know that there is um, a couple of things that we're working on, but you will be able to uh, get real-time information as to water consumption, and that's just a part of the software that's associated with the new automated read meters that we have. All right, thank what, you. Question, Madam yes. Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Evans, did there, was there a removal of the three models of P3s? From the agenda, that that was a carryover from a previous agenda, and see that herein lies the challenge that we have in the system is that if items are not deleted and they're pushed, they're just pushed to the next agenda, and if the agenda is populated, then that item gets put on there, and so that that effectively was an item that Director Bailey did some months ago, so it's it's it wasn't supposed to be posted and publicized, and that's why we're trying to move away from the existing system as it it's very archaic it, it doesn't 
it's not intuitive and it doesn't work to provide an agenda packet that we would like to see um, distributed. So that's something that we're working on here to be able to roll out here as, as quickly as possible. All right, um, discussions by city manager. Did you have anything else? Yes, I do, uh, Madam Chair. As a result of the New Year's holiday, our meeting is scheduled to be on the 1st of January. And if the board would indulge staff, we would like to possibly move that meeting to January 9th. The ration, rationale behind moving it to Thursday, January 9th is that we have reconvened the negotiations with the PBA and we have our first union negotiation session on January 8th and the city attorney will be asking you um, consistent with the statute we would like to have an executive session prior to that meeting to bring you up to speed real time as to where we are on the negotiations with uh, PBA, PBA. Also um, I would like to get uh, the okay from the council to move forward with scheduling a joint meeting with the city of Lake Park. They have approached us and for the first time uh, in both government entities histories, they would like to work with us to create economic synergy and opportunities for both <coughs> of our communities to look at how do we jointly plan for redevelopment along the Broadway corridor and so I would like to see if the board would give me the authorization to move forward and work with the city manager to get a joint meeting scheduled for some time in January working with your calendar. Uh, the other item I have is also on January 11th, uh, which is a Saturday. Um, I wanted to see if the board would also indulge staff to have a workshop on Saturday speaking specifically on code enforcement, code compliance, nuisance abatement, uh, some of the challenges that we have and some policy recommendations that we would like to bring forward for you to consider uh, as we start the new year. And then an update on the surtax committee as it relates right now, we have two applicant applications that have been received, but I will be bringing the item before the council at your next meeting, uh, your first meeting in January with the two names I have and then ultimately requesting that the council look to appoint some members to serve on that committee so we can start moving um, on, on some of the projects and the plan. So uh, just wanted to bring you up to speed. So I, I just need direction from the council if you are willing to move the meeting to January 9th, our regular city council meeting, which is a Thursday. If you can provide me direction to meet with the city manager and work on a joint meeting with the town of Lake Park, and then if you're okay with us moving forward with solidifying the January 11th Saturday workshop to talk about code enforcement and nuisance abatement and uh, community cleanup. Madam Chair. Yes. Is there any other day besides the, I mean, could we do the 10th or, you're, you're saying it has to be after the 8th because of your negotiations on the date of the 8th. Could we make it the evening of the 8th if the CRA meeting isn't too heavy a load? I'm wondering, I, I'm only asking because many of us have already planned to go to the Artie Gras um, uh, event that uh. evening. Uh, we can, if, it, if the board will indulge us, we would certainly, uh, we can do the eighth, um, if that will work, because that, I, can't I, I do just the want. We I have a CRA meeting scheduled for the eighth. I can't do the eighth. But aren't, well, first of all, aren't you all, you want to announce something about some closed executive sessions, so we can't do all that in the same night. Exactly. So, <clears throat> and I think in the, the point of having the ninth was to be able to have that free time to have those closed executive sessions that you should be announcing in a few minutes um, and then have the meetings. But if we try to do that on the CRA night, we're not, we're going to be here all night. Could we do the 10th? What is that, a Friday? Friday? Yeah. No. Because oh. then he's asking us to come on the 11th, which oh, is gotcha. impractical. He said the 11th where? Yeah, for yeah, the Saturday, yeah. for the, the Saturday, Saturday one. Yeah, and mm. that poses a conflict because that's the week in before uh, opening session in Palm Beach County oh, days. But that's on the Wednesday and Tuesday and Wednesday well, or something. I, like I'll that. be traveling on Sunday, so I was trying to get oh, in some I time with the legislators to lobby for our um, appropriations. 
We can we can move that if the 18th works better or. Yeah, that's 18th the parade. Oh, that's MLK. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all right. The, the ninth, it's it's not a big deal. The thing. All right. So the the ninth. What, Miss Lanier, you said the ninth didn't work for you, or you said the eighth. The eighth didn't work because it was too much going on that day. Oh, okay. Wait. Keep what's it, going on on the eighth? What's going on on the eighth? Are we having a are we having closed executive sessions well, and, and we're having a CRA meetings and. Well, she's well, getting ready to announce that. She hasn't announced that yet. The ninth is good for me. Pull your mic down, Miss Lanier. Uh -huh. Your microphone. What is the ninth is good for me? Yeah, the ninth is fine for me. I personally like the eighth and bump the CRA. I do too. Because then, by us going on the ninth, we bump P and Z, and they have a couple projects that are time sensitive. In fact, they're, they're, that would definitely push back this, the items that they have coming before them. <coughs> Let's just have it on our schedule on the first. The first New Year's Day? What? Well, what's the problem? It's a national holiday. Okay, I won't be here on the first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about the second? Oh, we, the point is, have it. We want to have it after the eighth. Right, right. On or after, or definitely after the eighth. On, on or after the eighth. Um, we can, can we check with Mr. Evans? We, we I just to, text we Mr. Scott Evans to see if we have a meeting on the eighth, but I don't or foresee we, that there's anything that's pressing on the CRA side. What's with the six? That well, I'm sorry, we got to go after the eighth. Um, well, maybe. If you wanted to look at the following week. Uh, if you wanted to maybe look at the 13th or the 14th, well, that's, I think, Tallahassee, Tallahassee. Tallahassee County. Um, Madam Chair, Chairperson of the CRA Commission, I think you have the authority to set meetings on the CRA side as well as the Executive Director. Oh, that's good. You have the Executive Decision Authority to... I mean, I have to talk. I don't know what we have to do. If there's anything time sensitive. So can we, um, I can, um, we can, if we can't get in touch with Ms. Evans in the next couple of really? <laughs> we can um, have two council people. One of us can make a request to have a special, well, not, we don't want to necessarily call it a special meeting, but I mean, essentially that's what it would be. Mm -mm, no. Yeah. But special meeting is only limited to items that are I mean, listed have in the call. I mean, it would just be what it is. There just won't be any additions, deletions, or uh, <laughs> substitutions that night. Well, we I, you know. We would have to set the date for the executive session. And then, too, the other thing is, don't we have the ordinance coming back second on second reading? reading? Yeah. It'd be my opinion if we just, not that I don't care about our, our extended family on Broadway, bump the CRA's meeting and. Maybe we can just change the CRA meeting date. Maybe the CRA board or executive can change the CRA dates to another date, possibly. Um, Madam Chair? maybe he can have his a little, maybe on the 6th. Madam Chair, if it's not a lengthy agenda, would we not be able to have both? No. no. I don't think we are. She's already be. suggesting post-session. Yeah. Maybe, we, maybe, um, talk, I'll talk with Mr. Evans, Scott Evans, and maybe he can have a CRA meeting on the 6th, that Monday, if people are available, he can move it to that day, and then we, that way, we, since we have to have ours the 8th and beyond. Yeah. But if it has to be, if we have to have it, but, but I'm not sure if anything is um, pressing. Well, if that's true, Madam Chair, then Mr. Manager, if you're looking to go in the second week of it has January, to be after the eighth. Then our second meeting for the month of January would be on the fifteenth. I need glasses. We'll be in Tallahassee. Right. Yeah. So the twenty second. But the. Your suggestion of having it on the 8th, the day of the CRA, I think we could possibly go at least 
entertain that, and then the CRE can possibly change date. their date. date. Yeah. 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 All right. So January 8th, we'll have our um, first council meeting for the month. And that brings the 15th. We'll discuss that meeting date at another time. No, we're or, not here on the 15th. That's what I'm saying. Um, we have to change the date. Uh, uh, at, at your meeting, your first meeting in January, we I'll can get identify. With and we'll work out. You know, okay. Yeah. All right. Do we need to vote on that? Because there was some confusion. Well, yeah, I know Miss, um, what's her name? And Claudine, yeah, she said something about that one time before. So, someone make a motion to have our move our January first meeting to January eighth at six p.m. So moved. Second. All right, Madam Clerk. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Chair Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Chair um, Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson Lawson. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, so Mr. Evans, you will try to get with Mr. Scott Evans and rearrange the second meeting. I will. All right, and then we can talk with him as well about changing his meeting to maybe another day, maybe to six or somewhere around there. All right, um, discussion by city. Did, were you finished, no. Mr. Evans? Well, we have to did, talk about the 11th, did, the workshop. Did we want um, the 11th on for the, uh, the Saturday workshop, or would the board like for me to look at the meeting, the second meeting in January and keep it light and maybe that's the, the meeting that we just dig into the code enforcement, code compliance related items? We can do the 25th. That's the day of the state of the city. Uh, yeah. No, we can stay with the 11th. I'm fine with at the 11. Okay. Mr. Lawson, Mr. McCoy? Yeah, I think I'm not going to be here. And we'll just do like we did last time. Well, actually, I'll be here. I won't be traveling until this Sunday. Okay. So that'll work for you, Mr. Lawson? But I, I don't know if I'm going to be at the meeting. As I well mean, you weren't there this Saturday either. We will manage. It's, 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 at this Just rate, the 11th is fine, Madam Chair. Okay. At so, this rate, you ought to give us a gift card because we're becoming full time employees <laughs> here. Um. <laughs> All right, so the 11th it is. That concludes my comments, Madam Chair. All right, um, discussion by city attorney? Yes, thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Pursuant to Florida statute section 296.0118D, public meetings and records, um, our office is um, seeking to obtain advice concerning certain litigation, and I'm requesting that the city council be available for a closed executive session in the matter of Lady March Goldwire versus the city of Riviera Beach, case number 918CV81285. Um, Understanding that you have now decided and voted on to meet for January 8th, I would ask that we could meet prior to the city council meeting at that time. Is that the pleasure of the board? Yes, the 530. Correct. Okay. And that would be at City Hall, um, Council Chambers, 600 West Blue Heron Boulevard, second floor, Riviera Beach. And um, again, the persons in attendance would be the city attorney, Ms. Wynn, our special counsel, Don Stevens, Mayor Felder, the members of the city council, Mr. Evans, the city manager, and the assistant city manager, Ms. Jacobs. The subject matter of this closed executive session shall be restricted only to settlement negotiations or strategy sessions related to the litigation. And Madam Chair, when is that? This is before the um, city meeting on the 8th at 5.30? Yes. Okay. Now I have one other matter to address mm -hmm. with you. And that's um, pursuant to Florida statute, same section. We are seeking to obtain advice concerning the ongoing labor negotiations um, between the city and the PBA. And for that, we're seeking to do that right after the closed executive session on the Lady March matter. 
So that would be January 8th, and it would be um, following right after. Okay. Okay. Um, question. Yes. A couple of them. We well, never have just one. Right? Because, you know, I, I guess if we're going to discuss PBA negotiations in a closed session, then also uh, litigation settlement, then go into our city council meeting. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping we're going to have a light agenda because this one was supposed to be light. Yeah. Let me see what how that turned out. And know, right? and you know I don't want to be in in here for five hours. So th th that's all I wanted to say about that point. We, we will certainly keep it light, Councilman. Um, because this we have four items tonight, just so you know. Yeah. Because I think there's supposed to be another presentation. Did I hear something about somebody's bringing a presentation in January or something for the January meeting? As far as economic development? Something, yeah. I think that is January, your Saturday. Okay. <laughs> well, that's fine. As long as we have a light meeting and we got to get it done. I mean, these are some important issues. But I will say Mr. Evans did respond back and say our CRA meeting is scheduled for the 22nd of January. So that works fine with bumping him. I told you, Madam Chair, you know, you have the authority just, you know. Mm, thank you. Appreciate well, that. With an iron fist. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Madam that's Chair. it. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, I do have to um, statutorily comply if um, the council has agreed on that date. Okay, so therefore a closed executive session will be held on Thursday, the 8th of January, 2019, um, after the closed executive session of Lady March or 5.30 or thereafter at City Hall. This is on the, the PBA negotiations in Council Chambers 600 West Blue Heron Boulevard, second floor, Riviera Beach. Um, the persons in attendance will be um, our out outside Labor Council, Mr. Jack McLean, uh, Jonathan Evans, our manager, uh, Ms. Rosalind Dickerson. Uh, oh, you, thank you, I'm sorry. When I announced that, I said 2019, but we'll be into the new year, so it will be 2020, just to be clear for the record. Uh, Mr. Randy Sherman, finance director, will also be attending that closed session. Um, interim Chief Spencer Rosier, um, Assistant Chief Michael Madden, Shavana Booker, and Ms. Um, Deirdre Jacobs. Again, the subject matter of this closed executive session will be restricted to settlement negotiations and or strategy sessions related to the ongoing negotiations. Thank you. So for the um, time, when we put the time on there for the agenda for the meeting, we'll say um, immediately following right. so that that 6 o'clock is not sitting there because I don't think we'll be starting at 6. So um, it, I guess we're with the comments for the board. Any city council committee reports? Uh, very briefly, <clears throat> if I may. Go ahead. Uh, I serve on the sustainability subcommittee of the economic development committee of the Palm Beach North Chamber. <clears throat> the mission statement of that organization is to establish and recommend environmental health and sustainability best practices for the chamber and its members. And we will be having a, um, on Earth Day, we'll be having a luncheon, <coughs> excuse me, on April 22nd from 11.30 to 1 to choose an environmental champion of the year. And we'll be rolling out those um, requirements for that contest, if you will, in the near future. All right, anyone else for city council committee reports? All right, uh, statements by the mayor and city council. Let's we'll start with the mayor. Yes, thank you. Um, just a couple questions. Mr. Evans, are they, is there a standard size for our speed humps throughout the city? Because I keep getting these calls from residents about the speed humps. There, there is not a, a standard size or, or design. It, it depends on the, the width and the, you know, a bunch of different factors. However, um, we are getting a lot of questions concerning that, and I think uh, it's probably at the point where I think we need to have a staff report and have a discussion with this board concerning speed humps and traffic calming devices then, and also have law enforcement present uh, and public safety to be able to talk on that. Okay, secondly, the O Avenue in Morrow Heights, I know we discussed about the drainage caps. I spoke with the engineering 
um, from Chinmore, and he's looking at some alternative solutions to go ahead and put either some type of rubber topping or even some asphalt to be able as an interim uh, fix to be able to address some of the concerns the residents have communicated about traversing the roadways and some of the infrastructure that's still elevated about an inch and a quarter. Okay. Thank you. That's it for me. All right. I'm Dr. Botel. <clears throat> Just to thank you, we had our first annual sip and sing at the Marriott <clears throat> on Singer Island the other night. We provided a free cocktail to anybody who contributed to the three toy drives. I ran the 12 Guitars of Christmas with Das um, craft beer that was with the Marines, uh, the PBC management, Jupiter Mama's toy drive, where we got over 1,100 gifts, which is wonderful, just exclusively for the kids in Riviera Beach, and of course the friends of the Riviera Beach schools. Um, we'll be having a field trip to Lincoln and Washington for Lincoln and Washington students to the South Florida Science Center this Friday. If anybody would like to accompany me, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I what wanted time? To, uh, eight o'clock in the morning on Friday. I wanted to thank the Marriott staff, the choir from Palm Beach Gardens High School, which did an outstanding job, and all the attendees whose generosity help, will help make Christmas even better for the children of Riviera Beach. <clears throat> um, well, there will be a Hanukkah on the Beach Festival of Lights celebration at 4 p.m. on Sunday at the Marriott on Singer Island. That's Sunday, December 22nd at 4. Uh, and you can RSVP by emailing rabbi at jewishsingerisland.com. <clears throat> um, want to be sure that everybody is aware that we'll be having mistletoe mania. You may have seen this flyer. Uh, Councilwoman Lanier and myself will be sponsoring this on Saturday. Please come over and join us from 12 to 4 on Saturday, December 21st. We'll have hot chocolate, gingerbread houses, and wonderful things will be happening. If you would like to volunteer, please contact my legislative assistant, Sam Brown. Uh, text him at at 561-388-3935. I'll repeat that. <clears throat> Sorry. 561-388-3935. And we will be having our Singer Island Town Hall meeting on Thursday, January 16th at 6 p.m. at the Clean and Safe Building. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Busby wanted to add something. Sorry, it's, it's quickly. I wanted to make sure that Ms. Wynn is included on both um, closed executive sessions. I didn't mention her name on the second closed executive session, but she will be in attendance. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. McCoy? Madam Chair, <clears throat> well, Tim said so much, I don't think I have anything other than happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, you know, happy Kwanzaa, and um, I had the opportunity of stopping by yesterday to one of the many events that the gentleman from the 5th District sponsors, and I tell you, <laughs> it was very informative. I couldn't stay long, but it was, was it very informative. The mental health one? This was the mental okay, health that I'm he so attended. glad he attended. That, <laughs> that he particularly told me that I needed to be at. <laughs> but you know, I was very impressed because there was a lot of uh, good conversation that came out of there, and there was a, a lot of resources. And I, I certainly want to commend you because the food was great, but um, <laughs> um, it was very informative. And I think it does benefit a lot of people because mental illness is very, very much prevalent in our communities. And thank you for taking that opportunity. But I think by the time Commissioner Lawson gets done in his term, we'll have a Department of Health here at the city because he's definitely um, proactive uh, about these kind of initiatives. So thank you, sir. Wonderful. Councilwoman Lanier. Uh, we're also having a, in addition to the uh, joint uh, mistletoe mania with uh, Dr. Votel on Saturday, we're also having one at the Brooks Center on tomorrow from uh, 6 to 8. Uh, that's at, I'm not sure the address, but it's on 4th Street in Riviera Beach uh, at the Brooks Center, and it will be a toy giveaway in Santa and a fire uh, truck and uh, for the kids. So if you like, you would, uh, we would like for you guys to come out. I'd also like to thank the staff of the Utility District and the City of Riviera Beach staff for continuing to work hard for us. Um, I would like more information to be provided to me at some times, but I think that uh, you guys are getting better. Uh, and happy <coughs> Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, happy holidays to the residents of the City of Riviera Beach. All right, Mr. Lawson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I actually left off on my committee reports, uh, the TPA report. Um, I was able to fill in for Councilwoman Lanier at the last meeting, and we actually did pass the long-range transportation plan. 
Uh, I'm going to be working with Councilwoman Lanier. Our next meeting is actually February 20th, uh, 2020. And we need to be really involved and engaged in the TPA to make sure that we can be a part of the funding for our roadways. So we're definitely going to stay consistent and um, relevant with these meetings. So that's just part of the report. I have a port meeting tomorrow that I'll be attending as well. So uh, to fill in for the committee reports. All right. Other. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So that was just to reserve my time, Madam uh -huh. Chair. <laughs> so now to go over my list, uh, we did have a networking brunch this past Sunday, and I want to commend uh, uh, Mr. Jonathan Evans and the staff for actually coming out. We had the entire staff come to the networking brunch and actually speak to our residents about working with the city. Um, our motto is uh, we're open for business. And it was an amazing brunch. Everybody enjoyed themselves. The food was amazing. And our staff introduced what the city is actually bringing to the community. So thank you again, Mr. Evans. Uh, Ms. Bubsy, Bubsy was there. Uh, and a lot of our other uh, staff was there as well. So thank you all. Uh, we had a mental health forum on Tuesday. That was phenomenal. Again, thank you, Councilman um, McCoy. Uh, you did um, fulfill your obligation to being there. And I appreciate you very much. Uh, but colleagues, it was amazing. The turnout was phenomenal, and it's going to be aired on Channel 18 and also on uh, Riviera Beach T TV. The next one we're going to be hosting is going to be January 21st. But one of the recommendations that we received from one of the panelists was to actually go to the community. A lot of people that come to these events, they don't, they already know that you know they need support, they need help. We need to keep reach out to the residents that actually don't know that they need help, the ones that we really have to touch. So we're going to have the next one actually in the park, similar to like the When They See Us Forum. So we're going to be doing it at Cunningham Park. Uh, we're waiting on approval and dates and commitments, but we're going to actually do it right in the park, the same forum. And the last thing is Friday at 9 a.m. we'll be doing a check giving ceremony. I want to just thank my colleagues for approving the $5,000 to go to Mary McLeod Bethune. We'll be doing that at 9 a.m. at Mary McLeod, and we'll be giving the students um, some presents as well to go out for the holidays, thanking them, and also kickstarting our 30 for 30 program, which is going to be we're looking for mentors to volunteer 30 minutes every 30 days. So that's going to be the program we're going to kickstart, starting with the program that's going to be 9 a.m. at Mary McLeod. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chair, if you recognize me, I actually did want to mention a couple other things. Mr. Manager, there was a conversation about members adopting a department as far as distributing gift cards. Did we come up with anything on that, or did you choose to leave that with finance? We, we still have uh, some of the departments have picked up their gift cards, but they have not distributed yet. So um, I believe Councilman. Uh, um, McCoy is interested in public safety, so police. Um, and then I believe Councilwoman Lanier, you were interested in? Utility district. Utility district. Okay. Any other? I didn't know anything about it. We have, we have an opportunity to give their employees their, uh, <laughs> their gift cards that the board authorized. So if you want to let me know which departments you're interested, we can provide you. Uh, probably most of them. I don't. We just got the 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 gift cards in yesterday. So. We, so today, you're talking actually. about personally handing them? Yeah. To them. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'll stand in for you if you like. I mean, okay. I would, maybe it's because, in, I mean, is there, this is going to happen on Friday. We can we can whatever day is the council person is is available. We can stagger it. We can be. You know, tomorrow all the way till Friday, even in some cases. But this um, is Monday. purely ceremonial because yeah. there's no way we're going to be able to touch every employee because yeah. of yeah, yeah, you know yeah. varying schedules. Yeah. No. Okay. So okay. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll coordinate I'll, with your office yeah. for public safety. And I when I said public safety, I kind of suggested police and fire, but I didn't want to be too uh, yeah. greedy. Okay. Yeah, we'll coordinate with uh, with your offices. We'll give you guys a call tomorrow and then work out. Okay. Uh, one more thing. So I had the opportunity to come visit some city offices, and you know, members, I'm really, uh, I guess, disappointed that we didn't even think about doing a a holiday party for us as legislative sure. department because every other department did their own thing, and it was great. I'm telling you, the folks over at the Port Center had some really good food. Then I understand the fire department had a really good time as well. So um, we I don't still know. have time to do a secret Santa. We well, I, cool I was names. hoping that we can dip into the contingency over um, in Miss um, Jacobs budget and do something on Friday since we're already going to be here for the interviews. 
Um, and I don't know if that's possible. Or did you guys even plan, I guess? We have, we have all the food and all that scheduled as the public reception. What so. time does that interview start again? Uh, that, the, the, reception the reception starts from 6.30 to 7.30. They start at 6.30. Mm-hmm. Okay. And all the, the, you know, we have to thank, you know, Councilman McCoy for the sector dollars to make that happen for the public reception. But no, we can, uh, we can certainly, uh, that's an opportunity. It's been publicly noticed. So, you know, the council members, we, we certainly would like for you to be in attendance and uh, mingle with the candidates and so that's okay. the Christmas yeah. That's yeah. So I guess we can, I guess, secret Santa among the electeds and staff. Is that would that be violating sunshine? You you, you would just have to do it in a pu- you have to <laughs> say it in a public Publicly setting who you're uh, out the names, you know, who we, your names. We can but we, we can as city staff we can just assign uh, people. Can't be over twenty five dollars. Candidates can't be over twenty five dollars. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll figure that out. Yeah, we can handle it. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. We had four items on the agenda tonight, and it's 9 o'clock. So um, with that, I just want to say happy holidays to everyone. Um, I think we'll have a wonderful um, meeting coming up in the next few months. I hope to see Mr. McCoy at our Saturday workshop. We missed him on this Saturday. Um, I think we got a lot accomplished. And oh, because I wasn't there. You got a lot <laughs> Stay with that, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Hey,